So Damian Martinez has been a subject on this particular show recently because he put his name in the transfer portal. It was surprising to many. It was a huge blow to Oregon State and really the Pac-12 writ large because it was the material example, the, the, the very real gut punch Forget the other sports that are getting gutted in the transfer portal in uh, Corvallis right now, like women's basketball. But that was the one where you went, wow, this guy said he was all in. This guy was commit. He was lining up all the NIL money. Oregon State could seemingly offer one particular player, and it wasn't enough. It wasn't enough. So Damian Martinez is a big-time running back. He's been one of the best in the Pac-12 over the last couple of seasons, R.I.P., He's in the transfer portal looking for other options. Now, he is a native of the state of Texas. Would I be surprised to see him go there? No. I'll get to Texas in a moment. But Miami is a great fit. Miami is a great, great fit. And I read over at CBS Sports that, you know, options that could fit Martinez's needs would include, you know, Michigan State, should of course be mentioned in there because you've got the connection with Brian Lindgren, the OC, Jonathan Smith, uh, the head coach. They also have one of the former Oregon State offensive linemen over there in uh, East Lansing nowadays. That's of course the logical number one option. But, 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 is it the only one? No. Ole Miss had Quinchon Judkins depart in the transfer portal. He's at Ohio State now along with Travion Henderson. That's the best backfield, by the way, in all of college football, in case you did not know. So Ole Miss being an option certainly can't be ruled out, but I think Miami is a perfect fit for two reasons. Number one, the reports came out from a bevy of reporters that the offer in the NIL department from Oregon State to Damian Martinez was in the $400,000 range. Now, John Canzano wrote about you know how that was kind of not not being misconstrued, but how it was getting played. And Martinez said, you know, they offered this or it wasn't fully paid. It's all just, you know, kind of flying around and such. But if there is a hard number of you're going to get $400,000 or at least very well be in that range and you're going to hit the transfer portal and take the PR hit and, and go back on your word and go elsewhere, I'm going to go out on a limb, not really, and say NIL is a calculation. And who, who has one of the best, most well-stocked NL collectives in the country? That would be the University of Miami. So if that is where Martinez's head is at, which is where plenty of college athletes are at mentally when they enter the transfer portal, I want an, a better NIL opportunity. I want to be able to go out and get more money. You can do that now, whether you like it or not. Miami is a fit in that sense. Here's the second reason it's a fit. Mario Cristobal's offensive identity is running the football. He he wants a power back. Mario Cristobal wants to build a championship program in in the the mold of Michigan. That is what he looks at as a former offensive lineman and says, this is how we win football games. We are going to dominate you in the trenches. We are going to be more physical. We're going to pound the rock and have a complimentary passing game, and we're going to play some great defense. I think that's what he would like a championship team at Miami to look like. And he's got a much better quarterback, I think, in Cam Ward than Tyler Van Dyke, who is up to Wisconsin in the quarterback carousel. But Miami with Damian Martinez at running back, let me tell you something. As a longtime aficionado of the Pac-12, I have watched my fair share of Cam Ward and Damian Martinez. Those two guys in the same backfield You'd be hard-pressed to find a better backfield in the entire ACC. I, I, I don't know. I literally do not know if you could find one. If Will Shipley had come back to Clemson this year with Cade Klubnick, that'd be a runner. I still might lead in Cam Ward and Damian Martinez. Power running, great back, who can be a workhorse, who can be a feature back and who's got a good offensive line with a capable quarterback. These are the highest expectations Miami has had since Mario Cristobal took over. He's 12 and 13 in his first two seasons there. Their win total, according to our friends at FanDuel, is nine and a half. Nine and a half. This would be a splash move. 
because he's one of the biggest names, maybe the biggest singular name, at least west of the Mississippi, who's in the transfer portal right now. That could all change come Tuesday, of course, if all this craziness really does ensue. But Martinez to Miami, that would be a perfect fit. Now, it is not the only option. And another place where I could see Damian Martinez going is a school in the state of Texas because he is from there. But remember, Texas, who certainly have got talented backs on the roster, just lost Jonathan Brooks to the NFL, a very talented player himself. If you brought Damian Martinez into that room, he is no less than back 1B. That that's a two-headed monster with like they, they've they've got plenty of talent all everywhere you look. You know who all here, here's why I mentioned Texas and why I just can't shake this thought, right? You got the in-state connection with Martinez, you know, ha- having been from there originally when he was recruited to Oregon State. But the other factor is Silas Bolden, Damian Martinez's teammate of the last two years at Oregon State. He transferred to Texas this offseason as well. So if the Longhorns decide that they want Martinez on their team, well, Bolden might be able to give them a selling point and say, hey, I've been here for some spring practices, man. You should feel the energy. You should see this place. You should come be a part of Texas. And do you think the Longhorns would be able to come up with some NIL money? I'm going to go out on a limb and say yes. So Miami's the perfect fit. And that'd be a big splash move. But don't sleep on Texas or Texas A&M or anybody else in that state who's playing power football in 2024. That's clearly where Martinez wants to go. And I think he either ends up at a Texas school or Miami. Let me know your thoughts in the YouTube comments. I know you often do, but I encourage you to do it anyway. Here's another running back whose name you should be aware of. Omarion Hampton. Hampton last year at North Carolina with Drake May as his quarterback went for 1,500 yards. That's a lot of yards. Now, Hampton, as I record this show, has not entered the transfer portal. Could there be an incentive for him to do so? 100%. And that incentive is that as he looks to the NFL, is it better to be on a winning team or a not winning team. Because if you're not on a winning team, you have to put up such crazy numbers. Same principles apply to the Heisman Trophy here, of course. Jaden Daniels just put up insane numbers. He wasn't on a playoff team, but the numbers were too good to ignore. But until the Pac-12 title game, Bo Nix was probably going to win the Heisman because he was on the winning team. So if you're Amari and Hampton, you're looking around saying, well, we're going from Drake May to probably Max Johnson as the quarterback here. I might be able to test the waters and find another home. Ole Miss comes to mind. Miami also comes to mind. Or any other big-time program that's seeking a running back. Hampton, supremely talented guy. Go find out how many 1,500-yard seasons there were from college football running backs last year. I'll give you a hint. It's a very short list. So would he enter the portal? I mean, that's up to him. Transfer portal is going to be open. The NCAA said, well, the courts told the NCAA, yeah, you can't actually impose limits on the portal. You can't tell people they're not allowed to transfer. You, you, you have to allow them to do whatever they want all the time. So that's what we have right now and why this portal window is expected to be so very crazy. And we're going to have a lot of coverage of it right here on Locked On College Football. But I'd watch for that name. If Hampton goes into the portal, I wouldn't be the least bit surprised. Maybe like Drake May, he's loyal to the brand. Says, you know what? I'm a Tar Heel. I want to be a Tar Heel when I forego my eligibility or graduate and go to the NFL draft. That could be all good and fine. But if he gets the sense like I do that Carolina is a pullback team without Drake May there, he could seek greener pastures. Would Tetairoa McMillan and Noah Fafita do that? That question was posed. I have a very strong opinion. 